What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the GS75 Stealth. This features the i7 8750H and the RTX 2080 in a 17 inch profile that has, as you can see, a very minimal bezel. I really like the fact that this is a thin and light gaming laptop that's a 17 inch. We have so many that are 15 inch. The options for 17 inch gaming laptops that are thin and light uh, are few and far between. Now this is gonna feature an individually backlit Steel Series keyboard. Uh, as you can see, they're changing colors and shifting around. It's really cool. Another thing I really like about this model, especially when compared to this little brother, the 65 Stealth, is that this will feature three M.2 SSD slots, which is a nice upgrade from the two in the GS65 Stealth. Another nice upgrade is that these are a lot easier to upgrade. You don't have to have uh, extreme computer skills to upgrade these. The GS65 Stealth required taking the motherboard out to be able to upgrade it. Uh, this one, you just have to take the bottom panel off and you can just pop those new SSDs into the laptop, which is a lot better. The ports on this bad boy, we have a USB-C, two USB type A's, another USB-C that doubles as a Thunderbolt port. Then we have an HDMI 2.0 port. That is a great selection of ports on one side. Let's see if they have an SD card reader on this thing. They have a micro SD card reader. That's a little bit of a bummer. Let's just go through it. So we've got a headphone jack, a mic jack, a micro SD, a USB type A, a LAN port, and the power port. Now as far as exhausts go, we have an exhaust here on the left side and two exhausts on the back with no ports on the back. Now this also features a extra large trackpad like on the new GS65 Stealth. This thing is almost as big as your iPhone XS Max. It's a very, very large trackpad and it's been also upgraded with new technologies to enhance the tracking. Obviously there's some other differences. You have a full numpad on the 17 inch version which is really nice if you end up punching a lot of numbers. Now this thing is not gonna feature anything other than an i7 8750H at least at start. They might offer additional options in the future, but MSI tends to be more conservative than other manufacturers like Gigabyte and Dell. They're just cramming in crazy amounts of power, overbearing the thermals on their laptops. When you're more conservative, you might be able to get more consistent power out of it uh, without having to fiddle with the power between the GPU and the CPU. But when you're jamming in the i9 8950HK and the RTX 2080 Max-Q, you're gonna be juggling the power struggle between the really powerful powerful CPU and the really powerful GPU like on the Gigabyte Aerial 15 or the Alienware M15. Those both have those super high-end chips. They're gonna have to balance feeding juice to the CPU or the GPU depending on the task and that's why you have things like the Microsoft Azure AI featured on the Aerial 15 to try to do that. Overall the build quality on this thing feels really good. It has a very rigid firm chassis. The actual hinge seems quite good. You only have two contact points for the hinge right here at both corners. I kind of wish it was a more firmly mounted hinge. I have had issues with MSI hinges in the past coming apart on me. Another thing that's really cool is you can actually see the heat pipes through the venting here for the GPU and CPU. Uh, and that is gonna be one of the biggest challenges on this laptop is can they keep the RTX 2080 Max-Q cool enough to really ramp up the performance and hit really high clock speeds on a consistent basis, especially in varying workloads. Now I've talked about this before, but when you're getting an RTX 2080 and you're getting it in a Max-Q version and then you're also getting it in a super thin chassis like this, the main challenge is that you're paying that really premium dollar. Like this, this machine is gonna start around $3,000 and, and you're paying a big premium for it, but it, you're paying for that RTX 2080 especially. And if you were, for example, to spend that same $3,000 on a non max Q version of a laptop that's a lot thicker, you're gonna be able to get quite a bit more performance for the money. So know that if you're gonna get the 2080 max Q, like in a laptop like this, that most likely you're not gonna get quite the same level of performance, probably about 15% less performance over Overall, but we won't know for sure until we actually do the benchmarks. What it comes down to is if you want the most power in the most portable system, then a system like this is gonna do you really well, but you could get a more powerful system for the same dollar amount or even a little bit less, probably about $2,500, but it wouldn't be as thin and light as this one. It all depends on what you value as a gamer. Now I've done a video on the GS65 Stealth, the new one for 2019. I'll have a link in the description or an end card at the end of this video if you wanna check that out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell and hit that like button for more. I'll have more CES content for you as well, so be sure to go check the channel out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon, out.